I'm Troubleshoot, let's get the best performance out of F1 23. Heading across to the main menu, let's get a quick benchmark of what performance looks like. From the main menu, head across to settings, then graphic settings, and find your way down to video mode. In here, we can change the resolution, and of course, the display mode to preferably full screen for the most consistent performance. Though, usually on modern systems, windowed full screen is also a good option. Make sure your resolution matches your display, or at least is a supported resolution that that way things shouldn't be blurry. VSync should definitely be off, especially if you're checking FPS numbers. Only enable this if you have screen tearing where the top and the bottom half of your monitor don't seem to match up. Refresh rate you can leave as auto or match your display, it doesn't really matter too much. What we're interested in is frame rate limit. Make sure that this is turned off, especially if you're measuring performance. However, when you're done playing around with performance, getting good numbers and making the game look good, if you're trying to save battery power, create less heat, or anything like that, I'd recommend capping your FPS to slightly lower than what you're getting. Also, this can help laggy browsers on different monitors, streaming software like OBS struggling, etc. If you free up a bit of performance on your system, other programs in the background can take some of that for themselves instead of just being choked out. For me though, I'll be leaving this off. Anisotropic filtering doesn't really matter all that much, 16x is good for pretty much any graphics card. Then anti-aliasing, or rather upscaling. There's a two-in-one option here. As all of them anti-alias, but only some of them upscale. TAA only is pure native raw resolution. Whatever you have set is what the game renders as. We can use upscaling via DLSS or FSR2, and finally XESS to render the game at a smaller resolution and blow it up to be big, filling out our monitor using AI and stuff like that. So you should keep most of the quality of a normal full resolution game while actually rendering at a lower resolution, giving you a huge performance boost. If you're going to use upscaling, I'd recommend either using DLSS for NVIDIA cards or FSR2, and both of these options, or all of them really, should be set to quality for the anti-aliasing mode. Only push this to balanced if you really need extra performance and you've dropped pretty much everything else. For me, I'll be leaving it on either FSR2 or DLSS quality. Should you choose to not use upscaling at all, you can use TAA or CAA and find that the FX sharpening for a slightly better looking game. This one I would recommend if you're going to be playing native. For now though, I'll be sticking to TAA only. Also, you'll see that there's a frame generation option here. This unfortunately is only for NVIDIA graphics cards and only for NVIDIA 40 series. You can, however, use a program like lossless scaling to add frame generation to your game using other techniques. I've covered lossless scaling previously in another video and you'll find a link to it down below should you be interested in getting frame generation for this game or any game on any graphics card. Anyways, finally, dynamic resolution. You can consider enabling this if you'd like your game to automatically adjust the resolution whenever there's huge frame drops, for example, to keep a high FPS number. But if you have huge frame drops, your resolution will drastically change, causing a weird shift in how things look, sometimes very quickly and very off-puttingly. I'd recommend having this off unless you really know that you need it. And that's pretty much it. With that, we'll head back and confirm our changes and just leave pretty much everything where it is on my side system, it's on pretty much maxed out for everything, so we can get a benchmark on performance to see what kind of numbers we're getting. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I can get my FPS overlay working, but we should get a solid idea of what's happening at the end of this quick lap. So, performance in game was sitting at a solid 56 to 59 FPS, sometimes going just above 60, but performance really is struggling here at 2K with a 3080 Ti, but this is to be expected as we have ray tracing enabled. There we go. So, minimum was 52, average was 59, max was 66, and we have the frame times here. Cool. Turning off ray tracing, or as low as it goes, we can't turn off ray tracing completely, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and run the benchmark once more and see what our performance is like. Now, there we go. From 60, we're now at a solid 90, 100 FPS. Let's wait for the end of the lap to see exactly what's going on. And there we go, 96 minimum, 112 average, and 124 max. A huge improvement, and even in frame times. That's quite literally just from turning off ray tracing. Let's take this a step further and optimize the rest of the graphics options. Now, in my previous video, F123, I ran through everything here, and this year, pretty much all of the options are exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and optimize all of these for most systems, and I'd recommend you pretty much copy the settings outright, except for a few that I'll get to in just a bit. There we go, we've run through everything. Lighting, post-processing, medium, shadows, high, particles, crowd, and 
mirrors all low, car and helmet reflections, weather effects, ground cover and trees all medium, skid marks on high, skid marks blending off, ambient occlusion, AMD 530 FX, screen space reflections medium, texture streaming low, variable rain shading on, high quality hair on, and NVIDIA reflex on as well, although this is only applicable if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you have a super low powered CPU, set this to on plus boost instead. Then finally, chromatic aberration is your preference Usually this comes with a relatively cheap look. Some people don't like it. I'm definitely not a huge fan of it and it's off by default. So I'll just leave it off anyways. Now compared to F123, there is an option missing and that is asynchronous compute. Having it on should give you better performance and that option is absent here completely. I'm pretty sure it's on by default anyway in the engine settings as it's been pre-optimized by EA somewhat, at least I'd hope. Anyways, of these settings, which ones should you consider changing if your performance is still lacking. Well, I'd recommend maybe lowering trees as you won't pay too much attention to them, as well as shadows as I've left them on high for better looking shadows while you're racing. Mirrors are something you can consider raising if you play from the first person perspective pretty much always, and mirrors are just a bit too blurry for you. The same goes for car and helmet reflections if you're playing from the third person especially, this is an option you want to have higher rather than lower just so the game looks a little bit better. Screen space reflections are one of the last things I'd recommend turning down as this usually adds quite a bit to the game, having it off completely makes it look a little bit more flat. Medium is as low as we can go here. Texture streaming usually shouldn't have too much of an effect on your system performance wise, but it can introduce some inconsistencies, especially if you're loading textures from a hard drive, for example, in which case you can choose to lower this to ultra low. So everything's loaded at once, hopefully at least, and nothing is loaded while you're playing, causing weird stuttering and hitching and things like that. If you're playing from a super fast SSD, this is something you can raise as it may give you more consistent, better performance, but this really comes down to a system to system basis. High quality hair as well. You're not going to be seeing hair pretty much at all throughout general gameplay. If for some reason you're stuttering or lagging in cutscenes or on the menu, you can consider changing this to off. That's pretty much it. We've run through the majority of settings here and these are my optimized settings. If you really want ray tracing enabled and you have a super powerful graphics card to back it up, consider turning on ray traced shadows, ambient occlusion and DDGI as those should make the game feel a lot more alive and realistic. DDGI is global elimination. Anyways, I'll leave all ray tracing off for now. If you have an HDR display, you should consider enabling HDR for a much more realistic looking game with much richer slash vibrant color differences between bright and dark, etc and really shouldn't have any effect on performance pretty much at all. And that's it. With everything optimized, let's benchmark the game once more and see what kind of performance we're getting now. So immediately we're starting at 150 FPS and the game still looks pretty good. Everything looks super clean and sharp. This is probably what I'd leave it at. I'm getting a solid 160, so the game should feel super responsive with very little input latency and everything should be super consistent as well. But we'll let this run through to completion to see what our performance numbers are at the end. And the we go. So we have a solid 149 minimum, 164 average, and 176 max with super low frame times. Sweet. A huge improvement. Returning back to video mode, I'll head down to anti-aliasing and change it to DLSS to see what kind of performance boost we get here. So we'll benchmark once more with a DLSS on, and we've now jumped up to 170-ish, but we'll wait for this to run through to completion just to see what kind of performance we get. I am playing at 2K, so this is now rendering at around 1080p and upscale to 2K. However, a lack of a huge jump in performance suggests that there's probably a CPU limitation here that's causing FPS to stay below a certain number. Anyways, we'll wait for this to run through to completion. And there we go. 167 minimum, average 180, and maximum 190. Cool. Obviously, I really don't need frame generation of any kind. You only really need frame generation if you're at 60 and you're trying to, say, max out a 120 hertz display. Anyways, now that we've seen the game perform, let's go back to graphic settings and talk about a super low end setup or even a handheld setup like a Steam Deck, for example. You're probably going to be lowering pretty much everything that there is to offer here, and you'll be using upscaling, but there's a few options you should consider leaving up. And there we go. 
we've left lighting quality on medium for a much better looking game, and everything else is pretty much lowered all the way down. Shadows we can turn down to ultra low, but low should keep the game looking a lot better. Down here, skid marks we've also left enabled, but you can turn them off entirely. Obviously a racing game, this is something that you want to have hanging around afterwards. Screen space reflections we've also left on. You can turn them off, but again, it removes a lot more of the realism. Variable rate shading is on, and it should allow for better performance on pretty much all setups. And that's pretty much it. Anyways, you now know how to optimize the game for the best possible settings, both keeping the game looking as good as possible with good performance, we've talked about ray tracing, and of course, optimizing the game for super low-end systems, and we've even talked about enabling frame generation on any graphics card on any system. That pretty much wraps up the entire game. I hope this video helped you. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.